Right, so hello again everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the MeQual KM2 Android TV box. I've just nearly knocked my monitor off. <laughs> Is it any good? Is it worth the money? And how does it compare to the likes of the Fire Stick 4K, the Google Chromecast? But let's take a look. Right, so that being said, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and let's crack on. Right, so first of all, I want to thank MeQual for sending this device out to review. And if you own a MeQual device, let me know in the comments section down below what your experience has been like with them. And if you don't own a MeQual device, let me know your thoughts on the KM2. So yeah, it came in a box, but what's inside the box? Inside, we've got the MeQual KM2, we've got the controller, and then we've also got the plug and the HDMI cable. But taking a look at the box, I think it looks quite nice. I don't know if it's because I had it on a white desk, but it looks pretty slick and it feels well made as well. Take a look on the front of the box. We've got like a three light LED display. On the right hand side of the box, we've got a USB 2.0, a 3.0 and a micro SD card slot. On the back, we've got the infrared, we've got the optical, we've got AV, HDMI, Ethernet port, power port and then a dedicated power button and then on the left of the box there's nothing one thing i did notice is there's no ventilation on this but i've been leaving it running for around a day and a half and i've had no issues with overheating or anything like that another thing i want to look at as well is the remote because i like it compare it to such as the chromecast i think it's much much better feels better to hold and then you've got your dedicated youtube netflix buttons volume up and down, mute, home button. You can also see there's a dedicated live TV button. I don't actually know what this does yet. I've been trying to press it and nothing happens. Maybe I need to install an official live TV app for it to work, or I need to remap the button to open up an app of my choice. Don't know what I did then. <laughs> You'll also see there is a bookmarking button as well. Once again, not sure what this does. Maybe it only works inside a browser. There's a dedicated settings button. So if I click that, I no longer have to go up to the top of the screen to go to the settings. I just click on that and it takes me straight through. There's a Google Voice Assistant on there, which works with me. So I'm guessing you talk a lot better English, so it'll work with you. And then you've got an input button and a power button. So there's a lot going off on there, but if I compare it to the likes of the Chromecast, I much more prefer this one. So now let's start it up, see how it performs with different apps, see if it's worth the money, and then I'll tell you my personal opinion as well. Right, so when first plugging in the box, it obviously takes you through all the setup process, signing into a Google account if you want to. And then once we actually load the box up, there's hardly anything pre-installed. But one thing you will notice is it's running a different version of Android TV. So when I was doing that little bit of filming, I actually did that yesterday. And I've come to do the review today and now I've got an updated version of Android TV. So as you can see, this is the new look that's being rolled out. And if you haven't seen about it yet, I'll put a video in the top corner now where you can go and see more about it. But yeah, a very similar look to Google TV. You've got your apps along the top there. Obviously now I've installed quite a few apps. On the home screen, we can go down. And then if you see things that you don't want on there, you can go right to the bottom, choose channels. And then there's one for promotional there. If I turn that off, it'll get rid of that bar. And then if I go to YouTube and I only want trending showing, I can turn that off. You can actually turn them all off if you want. But as you can see now, that list is smaller. To move them up and down, we can go to the left, click on that. And then you can move that tab up and down. Or you can actually just remove it by clicking on remove there and it will get rid. And then to customize how your home screen looks, we can long hold on an application. We can move it. We can put it where we want where we're on <laughs> you can long hold it again and remove it from the favorites or you can add more by clicking on the plus click on that and it'll add it to that list and also what you can see on the app section is i have got netflix one thing me quals always struggle with is getting the official netflix on their devices so you was always installing a mobile version and the quality was like 480p it were awful but now if i click on netflix again you can see we are running the Android TV version. I can click on something to play it. 
give it a couple of moments and that is playing in full quality. So the only thing that Miquel was missing has now been added, making it a very big competitor to Amazon and Google. So if I go up to the top, you've got a discover section. Now for me, nothing's showing at the moment. And then you've got an app section as well. And then also at the top, we've got the settings. But like we said at the beginning of the video, we've got a dedicated settings button that we can just press and then it'll take us straight into there. If we do go to device preferences and click on about, let me just move me across a bit. Look at that. I, uh... <laughs> so then we can come down and we can click on storage. One thing that's very similar to such as the Chromecast is now the internal storage. It's only got 4.5 gigabyte of total space. And if I click on that, I've installed quite a few things, including two games as well. There's still 2.4 gigabyte available. In my opinion, it's more than enough if you're using this device for streaming. But another huge positive this has got over the likes of the Fire Stick and the Chromecast is obviously we've got USB ports to be able to add external storage. So you can do a lot more with this as opposed to the others. And then if I go back into settings, you can see it's just the basic Android TV settings section. And then something else you can see is it's got Chromecast built in. Let me just get my phone out. So if I load up YouTube on my phone and I click on a video and then I click on cast and I'm going to cast it to the Miquel KM2. Give it a couple of moments just to connect. Still says connecting. It says free link to device and then there you go. We're playing ding dangly do. So already we can see that it's a pretty good device. So now I'm quickly going to test a couple of different things, see how it plays with 4K content, even try a little bit of Android gaming, and then I'll tell you the price and my opinion. So as we said now, Netflix in full quality, that's awesome. The likes of Prime Video, Disney+, Plus, Hulu, everything like that should be supported as well. Quickly, just going to test Prime Video just to make sure, play on that. And there you go, full quality once again. If you want to use Google Assistant as well, you just click on it, don't hold it, Play Store. Oh shit, Play Comic, don't hold it, Play Store. <laughs> Stop listening to everything, Google. Play Store. So as you can see, it's actually recognised what I was saying and it's took me straight into the Google Play Store. It's not a full Google Play Store you'd expect to see on an Android phone, but all the apps inside this store are supported on Android TV devices. I'm quickly just going to go into YouTube, see how it plays with 4K content. And as you can see, we've loaded up and it plays it smooth as you, you'd like. It plays it awesome. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go to more. I'm going to click on the resolution. As you can see, it is playing in 4K. I'm going to fast forward it a little bit to somewhere. I don't know where. I'm going to fast forward it to here. Because my kids love this bit. A frog runs across the water. Love it. Are you ready? <laughs> so as you can see, everything plays very smooth. It's very responsive when I'm navigating, but it is a new device. So we may see a change over time. I mean, like I said, installed a couple of games. I've paired up an Xbox One controller. Not sure what Daytona Rush is. But like I said, on the Xbox One controller, don't know what game this is but um i found it pretty decent you can, look bump gone oh bump gone <laughs> Ta -da! as you can see though plays it really well and now i'm going to try this dead trigger too not my kind of game kind of shits me up when i play stuff like this but as you can see we're playing it what we're going to do here boom boom Ta-da! good night vienna is what they say down in the south think <laughs> like i said once again as you can see it's playing it brilliant no complaints whatsoever hey up mate so now let's quickly do a speed test to see what kind of speeds i get over wi-fi and as you can see i'm getting me full speeds finally because it's dragging on a little bit this third party apps yes you can install them you can download downloader we can go into the favorites and let's crack on dot org I managed to install the likes of File Linked AP, anything you can install. As you can see, File Linked is there. I installed Cinema. If you open that, as you can see, it's working as normal. A little bit slow when you do first open it, but I have noticed the longer you leave it, the smoother navigation gets. But I only really noticed that bit of lag inside a third party app. So if you go through to the Miquel website, as you can see, you've got a couple of choices there. I don't know why there's two options. 
And there's also one where you can get two. I, I don't know why that is. If you click on shop now, I will leave links in the description down below if you want to go and check it out. You can see the only one available is 2GB of RAM and 8GB of internal storage. Pick the plug that you want. Then we can see it's $76.99. Convert that into pounds and I think it works out around £55. So me personally, what I think of this, I think it's a cracking little device. Granted, I've only used it for a few days, but I just really like it. If you compare it to the likes of the Chromecast, I think this is a better device. You've got your USB ports, micro SD card, you've got Ethernet, optical. There's a lot more freedom on this device without having to add different OTGs and things like that. Compare it to the Fire Stick 4K, and that's just down to personal preference, whether you prefer Google and Android TV, or if you prefer Amazon. But there's not really that many negatives I've found with this device as of yet. But as it stands, definitely worth the money in my opinion. We almost forgot to give it a let's crack on rating, and for a streaming device, and if we put it next to the other devices mentioned in this video, we've got to be giving it like, four and a quarter maybe even four and a half out of five but let me know what you think down below right i'm going now for anybody wondering as well it's not a sponsored video or anything like that any opinion is my own i know there's a lot of people that are a bit skeptical but just so you know it's my opinion right that video has lasted ages i'm going right so that being said i hope you enjoyed the rest of your day don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and i'll see you soon Right, so first of all, I want to thank Mequel for sending this. To oh, and we almost fucking hell, I don't know what that were then. <laughs>